when I came up on the car, I hit the brakes really hard. When I felt it lean a little bit, I kind of looked through the rearview mirror, and I can actually see the trailer leaning. Rolling that truck over was not even part of my mindset at that point. I lost control of the vehicle, and it started to roll. Because rolling over meant possible death, uh, burning up. I just kind of got scared and didn't want to look at it anymore. I wanted to concentrate on everything around me. All my focus went into what was in front of me, what was to the left, to the right, ahead of me. So it flipped over onto the side and then over to the top and then back over four times all the way back to the, to the wheels. It was all about how am I going to get out of this alive? It was very scary. It was very scary. It could have been my family in that car, you know, or any, anybody's family. So, what causes a rollover? The answer you get most often is driving too fast for road and weather conditions. And that's true, sometimes. But that's not the only reason. We want to go beyond that general answer to look at all the different factors that contribute to rollovers. By the time we're finished, you'll know how they happen, why they happen, and how you can avoid them. Rollovers can happen anywhere. You probably think most tank truck rollovers happen at exit and entrance ramps. The driver misjudges the curve and takes it too fast. But no, rollovers actually happen more often on straight roadways. Why do you think that is? It's probably because you're more focused on the road when you approach that exit or entrance ramp. Not so much on the straight roads. So our job here is to help you maintain that focus on all roadways. To do that, we'll look at several issues that affect the potential for a rollover. They include vehicle design and performance, load effects, highway factors, and driver factors. Let's start with the design and performance of cargo tank trailers. The first thing you need to know is the impact of a high center of gravity. Everything has a center of gravity. It's the place where an object is balanced in all directions. Anything with a high center of gravity relative to its width is less stable. And cargo tank units have a high center of gravity. That means the unit will lean when it enters a turn. How much it leans depends on the vehicle's speed, the sharpness and banking of the turn, and the unit's center of gravity. So the truck starts to lean. And what happens? its center of gravity shifts towards the outside of the curve. When it does that, the liquid in the tank moves sideways. We call that sloshing. If this happens too suddenly and too strongly, it can roll the vehicle. If you hit the brakes suddenly, the liquid will surge forward. That can also cause you problems. What's the key word here? Suddenly. If you do things more slowly, you reduce the risk of problems. Anytime you speed up, you're subject to mess up. As I was going down the hill, I kind of felt the trailer tilting a little bit because of the speed that I was going. And you come around the curve, and it's sharper than you anticipate, and you just won't be able to slow down, and you can roll over the truck. It made me very alert of uh, all of my surroundings and looking ahead instead of, uh, you know, being too comfortable. You can never be too comfortable. All drivers should understand the design and performance of their vehicles. But as a cargo tank driver, you also have to understand how your liquid payload can and will contribute to rollovers. So let's talk about load effects. Drivers who've rolled over will often tell you their load shifted. They'll say the load shift caused the rollover. But the load, especially a fluid load, will always shift. It's responding to the way you, as the driver, are handling the trailer's movements. How much load you're carrying affects how your vehicle handles. With a tank full of liquid, one wrong move can mean a rollover. The most important thing you can do to keep the vehicle and the load under control is manage your speed. Manage your speed to adapt to driving conditions. When the road and the weather call for it, slow down. 
As difficult as it can be to drive a full tank of liquid, partial loads are even more challenging because there's more room for the liquid to move. Over 94% of rollovers occur in trucks with a partial load. Liquid slosh and surge are a big factor in those rollovers. Slosh and surge are caused by speed, by turning radius, by sudden braking or taking off, by sudden maneuvers, and by load distribution. You have to pay particular attention anytime you're hauling liquid as to how much you're, you're, you're hauling, how high it is, what the level is in, in your tank. If you hit the brakes suddenly, that product is going to move forward. And when it does and it hits that bulkhead at the end of the trailer, all that weight now is thrown forward at you. Uh, it, it just makes it harder to stop. Surges also occur in a tanker following a sudden maneuver. This could be something like sudden braking to avoid an obstacle, trying to get back on the road after you drift off the pavement, moving the tractor too quickly for conditions, or shifting or missing a shift on a turn. And if you're not careful and you just kind of release your foot off the brake for a moment, at that wrong moment, you could throw it into an intersection. And uh, you don't want that. We should also take a look at several vehicle maintenance issues. Things like poor brake performance, a damaged suspension, underinflated tires, and load dynamics. They could all contribute to a rollover. You could eliminate some of them with an adequate pre-trip inspection. If you have any questions about your vehicle, tell someone in maintenance or at dispatch. Don't leave with a vehicle that you aren't confident will perform safely. I mean, it takes uh, just a few extra minutes to, uh, to check all these things, and it could be your life if you don't. Now let's look at potential highway factors. These include sharp curves, steep downhill grades, soft shoulders, berms, mounds, and curbs, narrow driveway entrances or exits, and limited visibility areas that can reduce eye lead time for turns or hills. It's important to survey and identify high-risk sections of regularly traveled routes. If at all possible, survey routes to unfamiliar destinations in advance to identify and avoid high-risk areas and proceed cautiously until you know and are comfortable with the route. Remember, you're the professional on the roads you travel. If there's a road design condition that makes you feel uneasy, report it to your company. Changes in dispatch or additional warning signs at locations like that could help prevent rollovers. You see this sign? This information is not for you. It's for passenger cars traveling in good weather. Fleet safety experts say that when you enter this curve, you should drop your speed at least 10 miles per hour below what you see here. We all know that long downhill grades can lead to excessive speed. So, are your brakes properly adjusted? Have you shifted to a lower gear? The only acceptable time to deal with downhill grades is before you start down them. Don't rely on the feel to estimate your speed. Remember that the larger the vehicle, the slower the driver thinks it's moving. So always check your speedometer before you enter curves, ramps, or downhill grades. And remember, newer trucks don't have the same engine retarding as older models. Be sure to set your jake brake properly. Be aware of the shoulder conditions on any roadway. Dropping off onto a soft shoulder may cause the outside wheels to sink and trip the whole unit on its side. Tripping happens.